week by Marcos Witt called Our God is Lord of All.
never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me.
Take your seats. Take your seats. Oh, Jesus is some kind of wonderful. Amen. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Oh, hallelujah. We have a very special uh, dedication we'd like to, uh, you know, it's always a privilege to dedicate the children unto the Lord. Eric and li little Eric and Daniel, come on down and bring your family with you, would you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. <clears throat> we'll, we'll take the offering in just a minute. Let's, let's do this. Amen. Amen. Eric and Daniel and all the family. Come on. And they're twins, right? Are they twins? Twins. Eric and Daniel. Amen. Let me see. This is Eric. This is Daniel. That's it. Fantastic. Come on, family. Look at all this support. Well, God love you for coming and supporting Eric and little Daniel. Amen. All right. Okay. Isn't this beautiful? Oh, Go ahead. Take pictures. Sure. In the days of the new covenant, Christ Jesus said, let the children come to me. And do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. And on the day of Pentecost, the apostle Peter declared regarding the salvation given through Christ, the promise is to you and to your children. It is therefore our privilege to present our children to the Lord and our duty to raise them in his ways. These parents now bring this child, these children, uh, before this congregation and before God to dedicate them and pledge them to the Lord. Amen. I got some questions for you. Do you, in the presence of God and this, your church family, dedicate your children to the Lord? Will you endeavor to live a life before your children, which will give witness to your faith in Jesus Christ? Yeah, say yes. Yeah. Gotcha. 
Do you accept the authority of the Old and New Testaments as the word of God? There you go. Out of them will you endeavor diligently to teach your children the commandments and promises of the Most High God so that your children may early come to personal faith in Jesus Christ. Since they're twins, they're going to come to the Lord at the same time. Because when you're feeling it, he's feeling it. <laughs> Amen. Eric and Daniel? Yes. How old are, how old are they? Three. How, yeah, let's, let's have their full, their full names. This is Eric John Soriano. And Daniel J. Soriano. Perfect. Perfect. Good looking boys there. Amen. Let's pray. <coughs> How do I do this? How do you have two boys? <laughs> Stretch your hands. Father God, we commit and bring before you Eric and Daniel. We ask that you bless them. May they grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as your word declares, we, the parents bring their, these two children, Eric and Daniel, before you to dedicate them to you, Lord. And we thank you for that. Protect them and guide them in all their ways. And may at an early age, they both come to personal faith in Jesus Christ. Bless them. Keep them in good health and well. May they prosper in everything they do. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. D did I give you back wrong? <laughs> Twins. Sorry. All right, off you go. Thank you, and thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Italia. Great family you have here, hon. Yeah. Amen. A great family. <laughs>
Sunday was Alms Sunday, and boy, did the alms come in, and the goodness of God was seen big time. God is good. I say God is good, and all the time, the goodness of God, it never fails. It never fails. I was reminded that last year, uh, on that Alms Sunday last year, $22,000 came in, which is quite a lot of money to come in. And the most that's ever come in was many years ago, several years ago, when the economy was much better. We had $27,000 come in. So we need to be somewhere around last year to get the job done, although more baskets are probably going to be required this year than last year. Our own sign-ups are, cl are close to 100 families compared to 50 last year. And not counting what Ann and them are, are uh, accumulating there. So it's going to be over 1,200, closer to 1,500 baskets. At uh, We're not sure even what the prices are going to be yet. Uh, we're waiting for that all-important ad to come out <laughs> for Thanksgiving. But the, the God is giving us favor with the stores, and we're getting the best deal that we can to be good stewards of God's money. So uh, we've been praying for at least 22 to come in. So uh, would you like to know what came in last week? Okay. And now this is just one Sunday, not counting uh, all the other trickle-in amounts that – come in. But if we can't make it, if we can't get the money on that one Sunday, usually we're going to be um, looking at Lynx Lake for a fish with a gold <laughs> coin in its mouth. But we won't. Th I won't have to go to the lake this year. Amen. Would, would you think over $25,000 would be good? Would you think that would be good? Yeah. Uh, let me tell you what came in. $36,000. <laughs> come on up. $36,000 came in. To God be the glory. I've asked our sister to blow the shofar in celebration. Go ahead, girl. Whoa. Whoa. What? That was fantastic. All that hot air came out of you. <laughs> now, there's something special about this. You, you need to. You need to. Share the show far. Um, a year ago, can I cry? I'm with you. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm with you. A year ago, I lost my husband, Lenny. Um, he passed away, and this was his show far. And um, he could never play it, it was given to him. And um, we went to a prayer meeting, and he was prayed over, and he was able to receive the ability to play this and to blow this, and I could never blow it. And then after he passed away, I just picked it up one day, and I was able to blow it. And this is just in honor of him and of God who has given me that. Amen. <laughs> to God be the glory. In the Old Testament, they would blow the ram's horn, the shofar, uh, for t one of two reasons. One reason would be to come a war. Uh, there was a... Uh, there was a a problem or a danger coming, so they would call the soldiers to war with a certain uh, uh, blow of the shofar. But also they would blow it to come worship, to come celebrate. And that's what she blew right then, is we're celebrating the goodness of God. Over 30, now this is going to edge up to close to $40,000 for alms. It's an incredible amount. It's mind-blowing. But that's what God does. He likes to blow our minds. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Not, not only will we have an abundance for enough baskets now, not one will go home without, but we'll have enough jackets for every little child to have one. We'll have blankets for, every, for everyone that's cold and their bed is, is naked and bare. We got, uh, we got jackets for the or blankets for the kids' beds. And, and also, there'll be overflow for Christmas and overflow into January, which is a very, which is a very hard month for our church because our, by the time we're done with Thanksgiving and Christmas, our cupboards and uh, our funds have gone. They're bare. But now there will be overflow. You know what this reminds me of? God brought it to my attention, and, and somebody else had the same uh, thought and the same input from the Holy Spirit. The loaves and the fishes. 
Not only was that miracle enough to feed the masses, but there was 12 baskets left over for, for an abundance later. So not, not only did God provide enough to feed every family, but there is a carryover of 12 baskets full for, for later need. Isn't that wonderful? To God be the glory. Let's lift your hands and lift your hands. Let's thank God right now. Come on. We thank you, Lord, for the abundance, for the overflowing, and for the alms that have come in now. Blessed to do a good work and to bring a good result in Jesus' name. All God's people said, Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord. Wow. What? Isn't God good? All the time. Now, I just have a few minutes here. I want to uh, bring just a, a quick word about how powerful almsgiving is. It has powerful impact. What do you mean it has impact? It, it literally changes what it touches by the power of God. God uses it in a mighty way. Alms is a very uh, a dear, uh, close to God's heart thing that he wants his people to do because it's our prayers and alms what we give to help the poor, to help others, that comes up before God as a memorial. I mean, it's fantastic. It's likened to prayer. Wow. It has impact. Your alms that you have given, and more alms, they're still coming in on the Internet, in the mailbox. Every Sunday in the, in the offering, there's more alms coming in. People are generous. Let me tell you something about this church. It's like what Paul said about the church in Macedonia. He says they gave out of their great need and poverty, but yet they gave beyond what we expected them to give. And you guys gave beyond what we expected. And many of you, out of your, your, your need and your lack, you gave to help somebody else. Now, let me tell you something about that. God honors that. God will reward that. It'll come back to you 30, 60, 100 fold. I've already had testimonies from people as I'm waiting out in the lobby come up and said, Pastor, you know the alms that we didn't think we could afford, but we gave in faith to God. It's already come back five times to us. But that's not, the, that's not the actual motive. That's the result. That's the overflow. That's the reward. The motive, the motive is we love Jesus. And that almsgiving, your almsgiving has impact. Let me tell you about the impact your almsgiving has. Number one, it impacts God himself. Your giving, these alms that has come in, these jackets, these blankets, the boxes of food, it impacts the Lord. In what way? Look at Proverbs 30, uh, 1431. Proverbs 1431 in the NIV, please. So, Kyle, you need to read it on the board. Go ahead. He who oppresses the poor shows contempt for their maker, but whoever is kind to the needy honors God. Whoever is kind, whoever gives to the needy, helps the needy, honors God. So your giving honors God. When we give out the jackets and the blankets, it honors God. It also pleases God. Hebrews 13, 16, out of the NIV as well. Go ahead, Kyle. And do not forget to do good unto the, and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. So when we give our alms to share with others, when we help them with tangible things like blankets and jackets, it pleases God. What an impact your alms has. It pleases God and it honors God. Wow. The second thing it does when you give your alms, it impacts others directly and indirectly. Directly, it, it meets someone else's need. Now think about this. This is a practical, what I call a practical impact. When we, t when we buy the food for the baskets, it's to go to somebody that's hungry. Jackets is to go to somebody that's naked. Blankets is to go to somebody that's cold. It's meeting a practical, say practical, 
need right where the person is. An immediate need is being met by the love of Jesus. See, giving these things is more than just spiritual. It is, and I'll get into it, but there's a practical impact our giving has. It touches people. It supplies their need. Look at 2 Corinthians 9.12. 2 Corinthians 9.12. Go ahead. Kyle? For the administration of this service, not only supply at the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. So helping the needy, the distribution of these boxes, jackets, and blankets, and by the way, our, our food bank, our food closet next door is open after every service. Bags of food are given out. Every day the office is open, Tuesday through Friday, bags of food are given out. Uh, just the other day, Cindy came to me, who's our director. She directs and takes care of and stocks and oversees the food pantry here in our church. Uh, came and says, the cupboards are bare. It's raw wood. Do you want me to cut the portion in half f or lessen the portion that goes into every bag? I said, I don't think we should do that. Let's, that's what the alms are for. Let's use alms to replenish the food pantry. So close to $1,000 was spent to replenish with canned meats and canned sausages, spaghetti and raviolis and all the kinds of things to help people. How many know people aren't just hungry one time on Thanksgiving a year? They have ne people have needs 365 days a year. So we replenish that as well to God be the glory. Because of your generous giving, people's needs are being met. See, that's, that's an impact your alms giving has. It has a practical impact. It meets the need. The second impact your alms giving has is it impacts faith. Now, think about this for a moment. When people are going through, when especially Christians, when Christians are going through uh, hard times, it's easy to slip into discontent. It's easy to slip into depression. It's easy to slip into, uh, into a despair. And what happens, faith begins to waver. But because of your giving, because of a blanket, because of a jacket, because of a box of food or a bag of food, faith is stirred. That flickering flame of faith is fanned, and it becomes alive again. They receive hope. Now, come on. Look, Jesus would meet their spiritual need, but also their physical need. He would feed the masses. He would uh, deliver the people. He would heal their diseases. So it's more than just preaching a gospel. It's living the gospel. It's giving the gospel. And often it's done in tangible ways, practical ways, food and clothing. People are touched spiritually. They're encouraged because of an act of your love in Jesus' name. They're encouraged. It, it, it brings new hope to them when they sit down and have a Thanksgiving dinner to eat. Otherwise, they wouldn't. Or when a mother comes to uh, church that day, and there will be thousands that come, by the way. If we, if we meet the need of 1,500 families, they don't come alone. The whole family comes. So there will be four or 5,000 people here. Now, that four or 5,000 people that is directly touched by the practical impact of the food or blankets are also being touched by a spiritual power as well. Let me tell you something what's powerful. When a, when a little kid's little girl's jacket is given to a mother, and their little girl comes literally barefoot and, and, and no jacket. And it's getting cold outside, by the way. And the little girl, his nose is running. And, and here's a jacket for them to put on. That mother begins to weep. You don't think that mother's heart is touched? You don't think the hardness 
of life's circumstances and hardships that's hard in her isn't softened by an act of love through the name of Jesus Christ? Of course it is. I often uh, make the point that when we give something like this to meet a need, it literally brings that person up one notch. It, it, it lifts them up. They go from looking down to looking up, thanking God. Amen. That's what your alms is doing. It's meeting and impacting a practical need, but also it's impacting them spiritually as well. I want to read a scripture to you. It's right here in uh, 2 Corinthians 9 again. Uh, 2 Corinthians 9, uh, 12 through 15, please. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kyle. For the administration of this service, not only supply what the What service is it? The giving and food and clothing to the poor. Go ahead, Kyle. For the administration of this service, not only supply the want of the saints, but is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. Now notice it supplies the want, the need, practical side, but also look what it causes. Many abundant thanksgivings unto God. There's the spiritual. So someone is given, someone has lost their praise. Somebody has lost their dance because of life's circumstances. Somebody that's lost and wavering in their faith is helped and given help in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now they begin to smile again. Now they begin to dance again. Now they begin to thank God again. And look at verse 13. Whiles by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God. They begin to glorify God again. Look, thanking God, glorifying God again. Those are all signs of strength and faith. Those are all signs of restored faith. Restored focus back on Jesus. All because of a jacket. All because of a blanket. All, because, all done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep reading, Kyle. The experiment of what, Kyle? The experiment of this ministration. They glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. Wow. Unto all men. So let's move from believer now, which your almsgiving will stir their disheartened faith, give restored hope, get their faith back in order to the impact of lost souls. Believe me, out of all those families coming, the majority are going to come not having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Many lost souls are going to come on this campus, these grounds, to receive help all in Jesus' name. The Gideons will be here giving out Bibles. How many believe a Bible has impact if read? If read. And they'll be coming by the thousands. And, and what I have found there is greater, deeper, more impact than you would ever imagine. Not only are the 1,500 families impacted directly, but also thousands are impacted indirectly because others hear of it. Other, other family members hear about it. When that little girl goes home with that jacket and they go home with that food, other family members, hey, little sissy here has a jacket, a brand new jacket, and Jesus gave it to her. Huh? Other people will be affected by it that hear about it, that see it, and they too will be touched spiritually by the power of almsgiving. Wow. So we could go from... from ministering to five or 6,000 to 10 or 12,000 people because they go home and tell their friends, the girlfriend. Well, boy, that's a nice jacket, little sissy. I thought you didn't have money for a jacket. I don't. Jesus gave it. That has impact. It's all because of almsgiving. 
God will use it like he did the loaves and the fishes. God will use it like he did the widow's might. God will use it and make something great happen. Amen. There's also another impact. We talked about lost souls. Check this out. Romans 12.20. Romans 12.20. Look what happens when you help people. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry. Now, let me explain this. Our idea of enemy today is different than it was 2,000 years ago. Your idea of an enemy today is somebody that hurts you, somebody that wants to harm you and your family. Back then, anybody that wasn't a Jew was an enemy, an enemy of God. Anybody. Doesn't matter if they were good people or, wh or whatever. They were an enemy. So what this is saying is, therefore, if, if an unbeliever is hungry, feed him. If an unbeliever is thirsty, give him something to drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. That's not a punishment. That's a blessing. The fire, the Holy Ghost, heap it upon their head. When we do good toward others, unbelievers, the Holy Ghost comes on them like fire to convict them. It's called holy fire conviction. Good old-fashioned conviction. Not condemnation. I didn't say condemnation. I said conviction. And conviction is good because it drives you to God. It brings you to the reality of who Jesus is and what he's done for you. So not only does almsgiving, what you've given, help the believer, but it helps the unbeliever come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord. It wins the soul. Often, often I make the analogy of a coat or a blanket uh, is like a, a plow. Look at this beautiful heavy coat. It's like a plow. Often people's hearts become hardened because of life's hard knocks. But yet a gift of love, something tangible, something that meets their need is like a plow. What does a plow do? Softens hard soil. What does your gift of alms do? Softens hearts. That when the seed of the gospel is sowed, it will take effect and bring forth a harvest of salvation. Oh, hallelujah. So we can expect, there goes my plow, we can expect good things to come forth from your giving of alms. Not only for believers to be strengthened in their faith, not only for needs to be met, but souls to be won in Jesus' mighty name. Look at Acts 3, Acts 3, verse 2 through 9, Kyle. I'm, I'm getting short on time. Acts 3 Verse 2 through 9. Go ahead. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. So he was laid by the gate Beautiful right outside the temple. When the people went to temple, they passed by the gate Beautiful, and here was a man begging for alms. He needed help. Keep reading. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Amen. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered in with them, with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. See, it didn't affect just him, but everybody seeing this were, was affected. Amen. And they knew it was the man begging for alms at the temple, at the gate beautiful. Here's my point. If it wasn't for his need, if it wasn't for the need of alms, he would not have got healed. He wouldn't have been there. Alms, the need for alms, the need for help, 
brought him to a place to be healed and saved. Now, thousands of people will be coming here because of alms, the need for alms, the need for help. We have an opportunity to say, yes, we have blankets. Yes, we have food. Yes, we have jackets. But we also have something else. And we'll give it unto you. Be made new in Jesus' name. Be changed by the blood of the Lamb. They could come for a meal that will make them hunger again. Or they could come to get a meal and leave with eternity. With the gospel. We will not let this opportunity pass. Just as Peter and John didn't let the opportunity pass by just keep walking. Everybody else was just throwing alms in the pot. But Peter and John stopped and said, look, silver and gold I have none, but what I have is better. What I have I'll give unto you. Arise and walk in the name of Jesus Christ. I mean, I'm, I believe many people will arise and walk spiritually in Jesus' name. They'll even be healings. Life changes right out on the parking lot. You heard me, right on the asphalt, right there by the no parking zone. People getting healed, people being saved by the blood of the Lamb in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. People are hungry for more than just food in these last days. They're hungry for truth. They're hungry for the true way, the true life, and his name is Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's one more impact I want to give you as I close. One more impact. It impacts believers and non-believers alike. There's one more impact. It impacts evil. The Bible says in, Revel in the Romans, what is it? 1221, the Bible says to overcome evil with good. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And in context, if you want to read 20 again, it talks about feeding your enemy or feeding the unbeliever, helping them. Because that is a good thing in God's sight. And those good things, your almsgiving, overcomes evil. See, the devil wants people oppressed, depressed, in despair. Uh, the devil wants people in bondage to all kinds of things that make them afraid and flip them out. But what I'm here to tell you is Jesus has come to set the captive free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. He can bring a peace in our life that is beyond understanding. Beyond understanding. He will guard your heart and your mind with his peace in Christ Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name. One last scripture I want to read to you. Oh, I love this. I, the, devil, the devil hates it. I love it. Psalm 112, verse 9 and 10. Psalm 112, verse 9 and 10, almsgiving impacts evil, overcomes evil, cancels this, the devil's plans against you. Psalm 112, 9, what does it say? He hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth. Now, wait a minute, Kyle. The wicked will see what? We'll see verse 9. And what's verse 9? Giving to the poor, helping to the poor, dispersing what you have, helping others. The enemy will see it, and what in verse 10? And will see it and be grieved. The enemy will gnash their teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. That's the power of almsgiving. Amen. So there's so many wonderful things that are put into play that are triggered when you give alms. God has set them in motion 
When alms is given, this happens, that happens, this happens, that happens. More than you can dream. Just by giving your alms to help others. Wow. Incredible in Jesus' name. Now, Dwayne, why don't you come up with your team, please? I want to close. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. See, you know it. Stand up, please. Before, oh, my soul, worship your holy name. Isn't Jesus? Well, lift your hands right now. Is there somebody here this morning that would say, Pastor, I'm tired of doing it my way. <laughs> That's what people are going to be singing in hell. I did it my way. See, that's the problem. You're not the way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Come on, you want a better life? You want to live forever? A better life, a changed life, guaranteed. Jesus said, if there's anyone... In me, they are a new creation. Old things to pass. Who needs old things to quit messing with you? Old things to pass away. Old places just to go away. And behold, all things become new. Who needs a brand new start? Who needs a new life? Come on. If you need Jesus Christ to come into your life. The Bible says he stands at the door of your heart and he knocks. Whoever hears his voice and opens the door, he'll step into your life and change your life and be with you forever. Heads bowed, please. By the raising of your hand, if you want to mean business with God this morning, if you want to accept His Son, Jesus Christ, in the work of atonement, the work of the cross, that He died for your sins. He died to redeem you, to make you brand new, to change you, to give you a new life. If that's what you desire, I want you to raise your hand right now, quickly. Yes, I see it, Annie. Yes, 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 I see your hands. Hands going up all over the sanctuary. Yes, I see your hand. Let's pray this prayer out loud together. In Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. Cleanse me, I pray, with your precious blood. I confess with my mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in my heart, God raised him from the dead. Now Jesus, save me. Jesus, help me. Jesus, come into my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Somebody shout right now. Somebody shout right now. Somebody. We've had people all over get saved. Amen. Somebody shout, Jesus. Wow. <laughs> I had a divine encounter in the lobby. You all in here singing your hearts out? Praise God. God took me out to the lobby for a reason, and there was a lonely girl standing out there. Are you the pastor? Yes, I'm the pastor. I, I'm troubled. And she went on to explain. And I said, you're sitting in the front row in my chair. You're, you're, you're sitting in my chair this morning right next to Pastor Angie because the front row, you can't see who's behind you. So you can't get all full of anxiety and all willy-nilly. All you're seeing is one person up here, and that's me. How do I look? <laughs> Amen. And guess what? Annie received the Lord Jesus as her personal Savior and Lord today. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And many others as well. 
lifted their hands to receive the Lord this morning. Isn't God good? Hallelujah. Lord, bless your people, I pray. Every household, every home, may they experience the prosperity, the presence, and the power of Jehovah Jireh in the name of Jesus Christ. Every need met, every pain lifted, every yoke destroyed, every burden lifted in Jesus' mighty name. I pray it for each and every one of you. God's blessing and peace, joy, unspeakable and full of glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Come on, lift your hands. We're going to sing as we close. Bless the Lord, oh my Come on, everybody singing. Oh, oh my soul. instruments, Duane, just lead us a cappella. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. God bless you. Go in peace.